Deku had Zeno's powers. Part 2. I know it's been a while since I, um, decided to make a video, and that's probably because my cat died a couple days ago. Um, so I've just been trying to recover from that. I'm fine now. I should probably be going back to my daily uploading schedule. So I thank all of you guys that decided to support me through then. And remember, go subscribe to Lord Duck. I'll be doing random videos on there time. So yeah, go check that out. And let's get right into this video. Now, we're going to start this video off where we see Zeno looking over Izuku. As the Grand Priest says that... This must be a nuisance, and they'll have to try and get rid of it. That's when Zeno said is that he's been sensing a plot that villains are going to be invading something called the USJ. We should probably train them. To which the Grand Priest would say, Sure, that would actually be beneficial, actually, because then we could get rid of him as the Grand Priest would just think it'd be beneficial to the training of Izuku, not be beneficial to getting rid of Izuku. Now, uh, Zeno then says yes to the idea, as the Grand Priest goes down to Earth and starts to train the thugs. Not fully, but trains them enough so it'd be somewhat of a challenge by Izuku. So, now we cut back to Izuku, who is walking back to UA, where he ends up seeing everyone in, already in the classroom. Once he gets there, Aizawa says they're going to be doing their first hero assignment today. So All Might would then run through the door and say that they're going to be doing a heroes vs. villains assignment. Now, Izuku would obviously be paired up against four people because... Why not? And Izuku, they think, is too powerful, and four should probably balance it out. Now, Aizawa would say it should be the whole class, to which All Might says, Alright, it's your class, I guess. As Izuku would be put up against the whole class in the Heroes vs. Villains assignment. Now, Izuku would basically just have to wait there, while All Might just tells him that... His classmates are preparing it to basically put the bomb there, and in five minutes time, he can go in. Once those five minutes pass, Suku walks in as he starts to look around, where he sees the first wave of students there, with Momo, Uraraka, and Todoroki just as, like, backup. Suku would basically easily instant transmission right behind them and basically just knock out every single one of them. Now, if you're wondering how Izuku learned instant transmission, he was taught by the Grand Priest who knew Goku and probably just learned how to teach people these, and he's the Grand Priest, possibly even more sh like the second powerful character in Dragon Ball besides Zenu. Zeno. Zenu? Hold up, wait a minute. Now, so Izuku knows that technique, as he'd continue to walk in, not bothering to teleport right to the bomb. As Izuku would continue just knocking out anyone who got in his way, until he sees the final person, Bakugo. Now Izuku would think that this is just a minor inconvenience, and he can just easily just um, slap Bakugo away. To which he does, Bakugo would charge right at Izuku, saying, Why are you stealing my throne of the most powerful kid here? As Bakugo would send a huge explosion right at Izuku, who would easily just wipe it away with basically the flick of his hand, just sending so much wind pressure that the explosion just blew right back at Bakugo, sending him flying out of the building like Team Rocket. As Izuku would just put his hand on the bomb and say, Did I win? All Might would come on the loudspeaker and say, Yes, Izuku, you did win. Congratulations. As Izuku would just be like, alright, I won! And he would then walk back, grabbing all of the students, and basically just putting them into Recovery Girl's office. Recovery Girl? Recovery Woman? Man, I have not made a what if in three days, and I'm already forgetting things. Such an idiot. Um, as Izuku would basically walk back to 
you a where he'd be congratulated by teachers for basically taking out all of class 1a or supposedly some of the strongest basically heroes in training so izuku will just basically just get a pat on the back as he'd walk back to his house where he'd tell inko that he had a good day now one of you guys did say stop making inko evil in all your what ifs now i have nothing against inko it's just, I needed a backstory for Zuku. And Inko is basically just like a penny I can find on the ground. There's a lot of them, and I can easily just make up, make it up. Oh yeah, Inko sucks. She hates Zuku, yeah. Um, that's not gonna happen in the story, so yeah, just be thankful for that. As Izuku would then basically just start to go back to his house, remember, tell his go as he'd go back to UA the next day. Now, Isawa would then tell the class that they are going on a field trip in a one week time as some sort of rescue training. Isuku would just think, so we're gonna be rescuing people or something? That'll be fun, I guess. As that week passes and Isuku, along with everybody else, puts their hero costumes on and goes and gets on the bus. You can think whatever you want Izuku's hero costume to be. That's up to you guys. As Izuku would then remember get on the bus as then tr travel to the USJ to where they would meet 13 who would then explain everything that they will be doing. Only for Izuku to suddenly step back in shock. A massive amount of key is coming through that portal with tons of people walking out, all wearing similar clothing of that of the Grand Priest. As he thinks, what? Could the Grand Priest possibly... No. This is just a training exercise. But that's... Uh, yeah, he's masking it as trying to kill me. I knew the Grand Priest was smart. But damn, I didn't think he could come up with this. As Izuku would instantly jump down... As I would yell, Suku, what the hell are you doing? Those are real villains. As Suku would say, Yeah, and they were trained by the person who trained me. They're obviously going to be stronger than any of you guys, so I suggest you stand back and possibly run. As Suku would jump down, now there wouldn't be a Nomu, and Shigaraki would basically just be pulled out of that whole thing, as all for one would know how to basically know how powerful somebody is, and seeing how powerful the Grand Priest was would basically not want his successor to be anywhere close to this powerful person. So he would just allow um, the Grand Priest to train the thugs. Now Izuku would basically, remember, jump down, and would easily take out a few of them, until he would instantly realize he has to try and take these guys down as fast as possible. If not, he runs the risk of having his energy be drained and his classmates be killed. So he would drop down as he would continue to defeat many of the villains. Some of them would pose more threats than others. Now, one of the things that the Grand Priest did happen to train was the Nomu. Now, don't ask me how he was able to train it, he just was. And it somehow is very strong, as Izuku would sense a strong amount of ki radiating off of that Nomu-type thing or that weird purple bird creature. As Izuku would be able to get down most of the crowd, as he would see this purple bird creature basically just glowing in ki, like this chaos-type person, as Izuku knows this bird is so strong, it could possibly basically destroy the earth very easily. So Izuku knows he has to basically try to defeat this thing as fast as possible without getting anything out of control, or else he runs the risk of possibly having the universe explode. Well, not the universe, but something close to that. He doesn't want where he lives, his only home, to basically just disappear. So Izuku would charge at the Nomu, powering up instantly, as the Nomu would very easily basically just slap Izuku across. He'd just slap Izuku 
across the USJ, where Izuku would then transform into a Super Saiyan. Now, if you're wondering how the hell can Izuku transform into a Super Saiyan, anime logic, and they use the Super Dragon Balls to make Izuku basically half Zeno, his race because he's Zeno's brother, and also half Saiyan, making him stronger. Now, if you haven't heard, they were in the Dragon Ball anime. They were talking about how Goku ha or Gohan had the potential to be stronger than Goku, as he basically was very could transform a lot easier. So he had the potential of becoming stronger than Goku. But Chi Chi basically made him study so much to where his potential dwindled a little bit. But we saw him come back in the Tournament of Power arc. Now Izuku would basically transform into the Super Saiyan multiplying his power level as he charged at the Nomu. Super Saiyan 1 still wouldn't be enough to defeat this Nomu as Izuku would wonder what power could it possibly want from him. So Izuku would basically just smack his head and think why doesn't he try to use a Hakai? So Izuku would teleport right behind the Nomu and form a Hakai. Izuku would try and throw the Hakai at the Nomu, even though he was very close behind him, as the Nomu would easily dodge it, grab the, the Hakai somehow, and throw it right back at Izuku, who was forced to dodge it, as the Hakai hits the dome of the USJ, as it starts to disintegrate in nothing. As Izuku just says, holy crap, well I guess I can't use the Hakai against him, as Izuku would charge right at the Nomu once again, only for the Nomu to uh, once again smack him aside, basically dealing Izuku like he's at nothing. As Izuku would then go into Super Saiyan Blue, as he would charge right at the Nomu once again, having to basically continue trying to punch this Nomu, as the Nomu would smack Izuku across the USJ like he did at the start, as Izuku would think this is impossible, before he would slowly drift into unconsciousness, as he'd have glimpses of his friends, his friends basically just being destroyed, his planet being destroyed, his mother being killed by this Nomu. As he thinks, no, I can't let them die. I have to protect this earth. It's my duty as, as myself, as, as a Saiyan. I'm so confused. As Izuku would then just think, they can't die. They're my family, my friends. As he would then be enveloped in a massive white beam of light. I think you guys know where this is going. And before we do get into that, let's get into a quick ad break. Let's get right back into this what if. Now, Izuku would be consumed by this huge bright light as it would then go down, revealing Ultra Instinct Izuku. As he'd run right at the Nomu, as Izuku would punch the Nomu right across the face. When the Nomu would go for a punch at Izuku, Izuku would easily dodge it as the Nomu would then be uppercutted by Izuku, as Izuku would then create his most powerful Kai and slam it right into the Nomu's chest, as the Nomu would then disintegrate. Now, from here, we cut to the Grand Priest and Zeno, as the Grand Priest would say, Huh, I did not expect him to become or unlock Ultra Instinct. That's interesting. As Zeno would then say that he's becoming even more of a nuisance. I fear he might threaten my power soon. Should probably kill him soon. Hmm, we need another attack. As the Grand Priest would then say 
that he could continue training more people and more Nomus, as they're going to be having a sports festival soon, they could possibly attack during that. To which Zeno would say that's a perfect idea, and that basically they're going to need to make those Nomu things a lot more powerful, so he has so his Ultra Instinct can't compare to him. Possibly even try and make the Nomus learn something close to Ultra Instinct. Now, Isuku would be would be congratulated by all his classmates, thanking him that he saved them from a possibly being killed. He would say that it was nothing of it and that he was just doing what anybody else would do if they had this power and were in that situation. From there, he would be called into the UA office to where many of the teachers wouldn't be there just because they're trying to investigate the USJ, but one person was there, Nezu, to where he would say that Izuku is too powerful to compete in half of the UA Sports Festival as he wants to give the other kids a chance. So he's only going to be competing in the 1v1 tournament, as Zeno says that it would be pretty obvious that Izuku would basically get first in the race, telling how he can fly and is very fast, and he can just fly up for the cavalry battle once he gets first place, so they're just gonna say he gets basically a buy for each one of those, which I believe, I'm not sure, a buy round, I think that's from like football, that's where I know that, because they get a buy into the next round in the playoffs, um, but Izuku would then just say okay, as he'd walk back to his house to where he'd tell his mother all about what happened. As Inko would just say that that's pretty cool and that she was uh, scared when he was telling her about how he almost died. As Izuku would say that it's nothing of it and that he's pretty strong now that he unlocked his new ability called Ultra Instinct. Now Izuku would be contacted by the Grand Priest saying that that training will be was amazing and that there is going to be another attack at the sports festival and that the Nomus are going to be a lot stronger. So I suggest you start to train a lot more. To which Izuku would then say that he will as many weeks pass as it's now time for this UA sports festival. Now Izuku, remember, would basically get a pass for free each round up until the 1v1s, to where he'd go up against Shinso. As Shinso would look at Izuku and say, It's strange. Why have I not seen you in the cavalry battle or the race? Did you possibly be the teacher's favorite so they allowed you to skip around? No matter. I'll easily crush you like a bug. As Izuku would basically take one step and would instantly get right in front of Shinso, as Izuku would say, oh yeah, as Izuku would grab Shinso's shoulders and basically just push him out of the arena, as Izuku would appear right back where he was. As Shinso would say, how in the hell? As he'd basically just fall out of bounds, as Izuku is declared the winner of that match. The next match would be Izuku against Todoroki, Todoroki winning against Siro. Now, Todoroki would say he's going to beat Izuku and show Endeavor that he can use his ice and beat the most powerful person possibly in the world and without using Endeavor's fire. To which Izuku just laughs and says, even with your fire and ice, you couldn't beat me. And it's sad that you think that it's Endeavor's cork. Can he control your flames? I don't think so. So why don't you start to use your fire? You'll become a much stronger person. As it, <laughs> Todoroki would just say, what? They're not his... What? As the match would begin with Todoroki sending a massive, basically, turret of fire right at Izuku. He would easily dodge it, and then uh, basically do the same thing he did with Shinso, as Todoroki would fall and catch himself in a wall of ice. As he would then kick off that wall of ice as he'd run right towards Izuku. Now Izuku would basically start running around the edge of the arena. 
basically trying to make Todoroki start running faster up until Izuku stops, as Todoroki would run right at Izuku, who Izuku would sidestep and grab the back of Todoroki and slam him, basically causing Todoroki's momentum to basically kickstart as Todoroki would be sent flying out of the arena and would slam into the wall as Todoroki would be knocked out as Izuku says, whoops, I guess I went a little overboard there. Nothing of it, I guess. As uh, he would walk away, and Todoroki would be sent to um, Recovery Girl's office. Now, Suku would then be crowned the winner of the second match, and now he has to go against the semifinals. Suku's plan was basically to do the same thing he did with Todoroki to Ida, as Ida's gonna be probably a lot faster, saying that Izuku, or Ida has a speed cork. So Izuku would once again just keep running around until Ida would go recipiental burst or whatever and charge right at Izuku, who would then just fly up above Ida as he would be going so fast he wouldn't be able to stop. As without even Izuku touching Ida, Ida would be sent flying out of the arena and slam into the wall and be knocked out, being sent to Recovery Girl's office. Once again, as Izuku would then go on to the final round against Bakugo. Now, from this point, Bakugo basically says that this is where everyone's going to see how weak Izuku is and how strong he is. As Izuku just laughs and says, so you're scared about being humiliated, huh? Well, why don't I just make that, why don't I just make that, you know, real for you? as Izuku would teleport right in front of Bakugo and basically just slap Bakugo across the face as Bakugo would scare across the, or like, he would be sent flying into the ground as he'd basically just be dragged across the floor as he'd get up with a now bleeding face and a black eye as he'd charge at Izuku, screaming that he'll pay for that as Izuku would very easily dodge all of Bakugo's attacks, as Bakugo would continue to start getting mad at Izuku. Only for Izuku to keep up what he's doing, he'd continue to dodge all of Bakugo's attacks, as Bakugo would continually just keep getting madder. Now, at this point, the crowd's just laughing at how Izuku's toying with Bakugo, which would cause Bakugo to get even madder, and would send a massive explosion right at Izuku. As Izuku would appear right behind Bakugo, he'd say boo, as Bakugo would jump up and scream it scared, as Izuku would just start laughing and you were scared of being humiliated, huh? Well, I made that a reality for you. And now you've lost. As Izuku would basically just slam his hand into Bakugo's forehead, as Bakugo would just collapse unconscious, as Izuku would then be crowned the winner of the UA Sports Festival. Until the ground starts shaking, as Izuku is just wondering, wait, no, the attack, I completely forgot about it. As many Nomus appear from the roof of the sports festival, as Izuku looks up, as the heroes yell for everyone to evacuate. As Izuku just says, Oh, this is gonna be bad. As he is then punched across the face by a Nomu, sending him flying into the wall. As Izuku gets out in a daze, as he instantly tries to go into Ultra Instinct, but he couldn't go into that form somehow. As Izuku starts to look around, seeing many heroes being absolutely destroyed by these Nomus, as Izuku says no. These, there's so many of them. There's no way I could possibly beat them. As Izuku would be slammed into the ground by Anomu to where he'd start having the same visions he had at the USJ. His mother being killed, his classmates all being killed. He couldn't possibly live with himself if we allowed that. As an even brighter blue light than at the USJ occurs, as Izuku awakens perfect Ultra Instinct, or how it 
Goku did against his fight with Jiren, as Izuku would get up and instantly destroy three Nomus with uh, with some Hakai's, as he'd start to walk towards many of them, as it, they'd put up a, a, some sort of small fight, only for nothing to work, as Izuku can sense the most amount of ki coming from a pure black Nomu, which basically is radiating with like Hakai energy. It's like if he goes near it or any normal person goes near it, they'd be destroyed. And almost instantly he sees a random Nomu bump into this black and purple Nomu as the random Nomu would end up just disintegrating as Azuku would say, I didn't know that was possible. The snow moves basically all Hakai energy. That's insane. As Izuku would destroy the rest of the Nomus, and he would then have to figure out how to fight that Chaos Nomu, which is what I'm going to be giving that name to. And I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I know it's not 30 minutes long, but it is pretty long. I thank you all for watching this video, and I thank you all that they'll watch me after a three day break. I know. I thank you all for those who supported me when my cat did die. I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.